Uh, I'm going to ask um, our next presenter, Dr. Chantal Naidu, to start loading her presentation. She is the lead um, researcher at the Presidential Climate Finance Task Team, and she's going to update us on the on the JP. Um, Dr. Naidu has about over 25 years experience in uh, climate finance um, and uh, has written many papers which uh, you can find online. Um, Chantal, I'm going to hand over to you now. Thank you. When I switch my camera on, that means you've got about two minutes left. Thanks. Thank you, Leila. Um, and thank you to everyone uh, that's online. Um, it's wonderful to see so many um, participants and obviously interest in this. And thanks for the opportunity to share the work um, of the Presidential Climate Finance Trust team at the minute. So I don't have a presentation. I'm just going to talk through um, some of the issues um, and, and the way that we're working. Um, and I keep on missing my own notes on, internally. So let me quickly bring that back up. Um, yeah, so Steve and the um, and uh, Tim, uh, sorry, Tim Pococo has spoken about the context of the climate change issues and the just transition, and I'm not going to go over that again, but maybe just highlight three points in the sense of South Africa being the most carbon intense major uh, economy in the world. Um, second point is that we are also the most unequal country in the world and the electricity sector being um, the source of most of our emissions and those that three those three pillars puts us obviously in a challenging position in the context of being able to transition from clean uh, from coal to clean energy and the climate risks that we face i think steve at the end of his presentation showed a very sobering picture and just as a personal note i was speaking to some friends um you know in in uh, in Europe and the UK at the minute, and they're experiencing things that they've never ever experienced before. And I'm sure we all have friends on that side and stories, but some towns are without water. A friend told me her medication couldn't come because the digital systems had shut down at the hospital because it was too, it was too warm and the servers had overheated. So some relief from a physical risk perspective, whereas it was considered mostly the vulnerability of developing countries, I think everybody's experiencing absolutely unprecedented effects um, at the minute. Um, and of course, the ability to respond to that becomes challenging. So Africa's social risk um, is a particular challenge, obviously, as well, because of the embeddedness of, um, of, of fossil fuels in our entire economic agenda. And this has material implications for workers and communities, munis, and businesses that rely on that coal value chain. Aside from those domestic level issues, at a transition risk perspective, our trade systems are also vulnerable due to this degree of carbon embeddedness. Um, and, our, and, our, and the challenge is also a mismatch on timing where our trading partners are accelerating their efforts to decarbonize. And this directly affects the demand for our goods and services and, um, and affects you know, the pace of our own transition. So where does the, the JET, the Just Energy Transition Partnership then fit in, which is the primary, the work of the Presidential Climate Finance Task Team at the minute. So in at COP26, there was this Just Energy Transition Partnership that was announced with five countries, France, Germany, um, the European uh, Union, United Kingdom, and the United States. Important to recognize that while that was announced uh, end of last year, there was a lot of domestic work and engagement um, in different parts that, that was recognizing the need that South Africa needed uh, a new type of financing, even a framing of finance, recognizing that we can't move to the new um, and, and without having this disruptive effect in the middle. And there was a way we needed to think about finance that recognized um, this interim space. So the political declaration is quite novel in that sense that it contains several firsts. The first that it recognizes this need that we need transition specific finance support to deal with this disruptive um, interim phase where you're shifting from a coal to clean and it's not going to be neat, it's going to be uncertain and disruptive and it has real human consequences um, and economic consequences. So the unique thing about the 
the other unique thing about the political declaration is that it recognizes it also centralizes justice poverty eradication and sustainable development into the climate response and to the point of the Paris Agreement made in the course of this morning's interventions already, these elements are, were framed in that 2015 Paris Agreement, but our political declaration um, is the first one actually to, to start looking at how do you raise and mobilize finance with those principles being central, not just an environmental response, but recognizing the more systemic human level as well. The other two points of why it's unique is that it aggregates support for long term transition through multilateral flows. So the kind of flows that the five countries I've mentioned can offer, they're offering certain flows anyway, but it's quite concentrated around the conversation now in terms of a three to five year partnership with the potential of going further an offer of 8.5 billion, recognizing it's barely sufficient, but it is a contribution and and for priorities that are defined um, in, the, in the interim based on the emission reduction potentials. So it also gives us a chance to focus very much on the qualitative aspects of finance. So what when I say quality, I mean, you know, that the kind of terms and conditions that are going to be favorable to a long term sustainability in our ability to pay back, um, not, to, you know, and, and the right balance in terms of how we work with making access to funding available. So the funds are being applied, uh, or at least targeted to apply to three priority sectors, energy, green hydrogen and electric vehicles. And as I mentioned, those sectors were there for the emission reduction potential in them uh, and the ability to also create the new. Um, Steve um, spoke about uh, the just transition framework, so I won't go into that too much detail, but also just to say the way the, the, the work of the TAS team is unfolding is building on the work of DMRE, uh, the Climate Commission, um, and a whole host of other civil society academic technical inputs. Um, given that the just transition has become an extremely topical and critical issue over the over the last few years. So we're drawing on all of that um, to help define how does that then relate to the finance. So I, I quickly want to mention the governance um, around the, the, the JET partnership, because I think that's really important to understand what's happening um, in, the, in the background um, and the fact that, well, something is happening, first of all. So the Presidential Climate Finance Task Team was set up in, in February. That's when Daniel Manelli was appointed to head that up. Um, there are members in that that come from different uh, public, uh, mainly public institutions based on their contribution track record on engaging on climate and uh, justice uh, issues. Um, and that is um, their mandate is to make final recommendations for an investment plan and financing package to cabinet. Um, and that body of work is uh, is underway, supported by a JET um, key secretariat. Um, it's an independent team. It's funded by the Climate Investment Funds, and they are also coordinating certain technical working groups across the three sectors, energy, green hydrogen, and EVs, uh, electrical vehicles, but also a finance uh, focus and an implementation focus as well. Um, and they are the, the core team that is actually coordinating um, the, the, the different inputs um, on behalf of the Presidential Climate Finance Task Team that will go to Cabinet. The five countries have organized themselves into what they call an international partner group, where um, they, and their mandate is really to see and it's important to stress as a South African plan, um, it will have to be approved by cabinet. Um, and, and of course, there's an entire interministerial cabinet process behind that uh, approval as well. Um, and those that is happening in, 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 in tandem. On the international partner side, they are on envoys, they are technical teams, and we engaging them um, around elements, mostly of the financial offers that, that they have put forward um, to try and better understand those offers and how they meet the needs of South Africa in terms of what the plan throws up as our priorities. So that's the, the governance journey. Um, there's been a lot of work since February. The partnership was forged in November and the 
since February, we've had uh, various meetings of the task team. We've had technical inputs on finance, um, on justice. Um, the Secretariat has been also organizing themselves around um, you know, contributing to the drafting process, going into con starting to think through the consultation process that leads up um, to the presentation to cabinet ultimately. And the idea is that um, at, at COP, we will present COP27, we will present a uh, an update um, and, and, and the idea and aspiration is to show progress. And important to mention also that COP isn't like the be all and the end all of all of this. It's just a moment in a way to help focus the minds of those that are contributing. Um, and there's also a moment for us to have concentrated work around the, the investment plan and what could work for SA, recognizing it's one part of a much bigger agenda, um, being energy specific, but there's obviously just transition spans beyond energy implications only. So what I thought I would quickly touch on is just the issue of justice in the context of the JP and recognizing and acknowledging that the interpretations of justice across South African constituencies is not homogenous. And the work I referred to earlier that the task team is drawing on, uh, and Secretariat of course as well with supporting us, there's a large body of knowledge um, that helps to frame and develop and understand this work. The, JET, uh, the Just Transition Framework is the seminal document as far as we see guiding, um, you know, that could guide this journey and being the document that's progressing through cabinet. So it gives us an opportunity, you know, to, to think about how the plan relates to justice as conceived in that, in that way, but in a practical dimension. So a few things that are coming up in trying to grapple with um, the, the quality of finance, but also the priority of sequencing these investments and how they affect is understanding the ripple effects of what happens as we, you know, literally, you know, close down a mine or decommission a, a coal power plant or in the automotive sec uh, sector recognize that, you know, they need to make a three to five year window decision on electrical vehicles. So what systems can we put in place? Otherwise, we lose automotive jobs as well. So first of all, recognizing there's personal strife. Um, and that's generational. Um, we had uh, um, recognizing inputs around, you know, people, children are coming through school, high school going into jobs might be redundant. So from that personal strife point of view, how do you give a sense of the new jobs that we will need in a new economy um, as we move into justice? So it's looking at the, at the future of our current youth. Um, those that are in those jobs and are still many working years left and their displacement, and then those that are near retirement. And so there's a personal strife. And um, one of the speakers mentioned that, that people, it, it will hurt. It's not a, a neat, quiet process. But also a lot of the coal towns and other dimensions have created certain economic centers around the dependency of either the power plant or the mining context in those towns. And that also relates to the infrastructure dependencies, possibly of local, local municipalities on some of that presence of those processes in those towns. So the quality of livelihoods and the recognizing that the mismatch between the we need to exit and we will focus on creating new regional economic opportunities. But in between, there's more than likely to be a immediate impact uh, where people will, will be struggling. So what social safety nets need to be in place? So just to mention these things in the sense that it's not really about, it's not only about jobs. Um, it is about a quality of livelihoods. It's about trying to create independent, thriving regional economic uh, activity and, and cohesion in a way that, um, not doesn't just leave doesn't just recognize of not leaving others behind but also does better than what we have now and that's the aspiration the challenge is to get there and organize how we invest in such a way um, that this is manifested but linked to that is also about the structure of the kind of interventions that happen and there is a narrative around structuring of finance around de-risking so that private sector can crowd it, can then come in. And it's a, it's a particular financing principle that the task team has been challenging. We need to move to a sharing arrangements on finance where public and private capital both recognize that 
the creation of the, the, the risk that leads to a justice environment actually came as a result of broad economic activity. One might argue, um, you know, that they are particular, you know, um, villains of the story in the system. But that's no matter. The point is really that there is a joint responsibility to contribute to just transition. So one of the key principles under financing elements um, that we're trying to enable, operationalize, get our heads around in the task team is around this idea of risk sharing. And also benefit sharing is the ownership structures at the place level, um, you know, appropriate for making sure that we're not just creating opportunities for big business, but for small and medium enterprises. Is there a role for the youth? Is there a role for women? Um, but not as an add-on, as a collective. So those are sort of some of the challenges around the financing quality uh, we're looking for. So as I draw to a close, I want to just say around the implementation and capital raising issues, which is the parts that we're mostly grappling with in the task team, is um, recognizing that transitions are place specific. So where does where's the need? What is the pace of change relative to what we need to do, you know, from an environmental and what's possible from a social uh, perspective? And then critically, how do you locate finance so it's closest to those needs? So the to wrap up the task team at the moment, uh, the priority for this year is to put together this investment plan, which will contain um, as much as, as a best, you know, best foot forward on what we can develop and to bed down with the five countries, the quality and quantity of finance that they are able, the, the 8.5 is what it is for the most part, but it's how we use it in a way that um, builds up um, and significantly begins a journey of contributing to a just transition in a sustainable way. So I will leave it there for the moment and hand back to Leila. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take questions after. And I'll look out on the chat if there are questions also. Thanks once again, Chantal. Um, I think few know a lot about the just energy transition um, work on finance. So we really welcome um, the input um, to this forum. Um, I liked um, how you are trying to use the JET uh, framework to give hope to people and to give hope about a, a, a better quality of life also. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see some of the questions coming out. Um, I, I also that your, your initial story also resonated very well with me. We have a colleague who's leaving us for the UK and these talks of water shortages and blackouts. And it was like moving to uh, Cape Town in 2017, we said, you know. Um, so yes, the, those effects of climate change are, are more pervasive than, than many realize.